The plans to electrify the world's vehicle fleet are based more on fantasy and wishful thinking than harsh reality. Because when you actually do the calculations to work out exactly what is required to achieve this target, the numbers that are spat out at the other end are absolutely mind-boggling. It seems most politicians are intentionally shutting their eyes to this reality in the hope that it all just goes away, which is a phenomenally stupid thing to do when they are making it harder and harder to keep going with existing vehicles powered by petrol and diesel. So when you get to see the real figures involved, as we shall see in this video, it is almost unbelievable that governments can be so willfully blind to such facts. It's a criminal incompetence on a massive scale. Welcome back to MGuy, British engineer and lawyer turned Sydney YouTuber. Please be sure to like, share and subscribe, hit the notification bell, drop a comment down below and don't forget to follow me on Instagram and Twitter X. Put simply, the US grid would have to grow by no less than 40% to power an all-electric fleet of trucks. Not 4%, but 40%. The big switch, electrifying all US vehicles would be a colossal feat. With California and other states steering towards net zero emission cars and trucks and phasing out gas and diesel powered vehicles, the American Transportation Research Institute set out to ascertain what will be required. The Institute's assessment found that electrifying all US vehicles would be a massive undertaking costing untold billions of dollars. It still boggles my mind, said Jeffrey Short, ATRI Vice President and lead author of the report. What we found were three very large challenges, he said. First is the amount of electricity required. Nationwide electricity generation would need to increase 40% to power the entire US fleet of trucks. So we're going to have to make a lot more electricity. It's a whopping amount of electricity, he said. That's just the first problem. Then you have to consider the amount of minerals and elements required to build the batteries themselves. And that too is almost beyond comprehension. Electrifying the entire US vehicle fleet would require 5.4 million tonnes of cobalt, 28.8 years of current global production, 3.8 million tonnes of lithium, 34.9 years of current global production, 29.6 million tonnes of graphite, 26.8 years of current global production. 18.8 million tonnes of nickel, 6.3 years of global production. The analysts noted a few caveats to their analysis. First, the fleet would not be immediately replaced, so this demand would not rise at a single moment in time. On the other hand, all of this demand for materials would be new and is in addition to what is currently produced, they said. Finally, this new production level would only supply a single round of batteries. Replacement batteries would be needed approximately every 6.2 years. They also pointed out the analysis does not include battery material demand for other countries. If that's not bad enough, we now need to consider the charging infrastructure required to support this fleet. Currently, refueling is generally a quick process, 5 to 15 minutes, and is done while a driver is on duty. Electric charging takes much longer and will need to occur more frequently due to the shorter driving ranges of battery electric vehicles. Depending on battery capacity, Charging a long-haul electric truck could take three to six hours. Using a nearly one-to-one -one ratio of chargers to trucks identified as needed by the California Energy Commission, the analysts found the US would need a direct current fast charger at nearly every one of the 313,000 truck spaces. Each charger would have to support at least five charging events of 3.4 hours per day to meet the needs of long-haul fleet. Such efficient scheduling of charges appears to be impossible. Myriad truck drivers simply could not conduct their normal business operations while at the same time precisely coordinating commercial charger use with other truck drivers, the analyst said. Likewise, drivers will likely charge while taking their mandatory 10-hour rest break, which is more time than charging takes. But the vehicle cannot move since drivers cannot go on duty to move the truck during a rest. Based on a charger delivering five 3.4-hour charges per day, the long-haul fleet would need 320,571 chargers at a cost of at least $35.9 billion. In all likelihood, the number of charging spaces required far exceed available parking space, and thus the additional chargers would be needed at shipper and carrier facilities, or in the form of new public parking capacity, the analyst said. 
Are you convinced yet that the plan to electrify trucks is a complete non-starter? And this is just the US. Don't forget the rest of the world. The whole thing just boggles the mind. And even more astonishing is how governments can just blunder on with this complete fantasy without any concern for these real-world figures. We are sleepwalking towards a world where fossil fuels are outlawed and yet there is zero practical alternative. It is a train wreck in slow motion.